In this tutorial, I will explain who sets the wireless communication rules and regulations. LoRa operates in the unlicensed ISM radio band that are available worldwide. ISM stands for Industrial, Scientific and Medical. For example, in Europe, the ISM frequency band ranges from 863 to 870 MHz. And in the United States, the ISM frequency band ranges from 902 MHz to 928 MHz. Let's look at these two web pages. This is the Things Network website. I live in the Netherlands, so I click the letter N. As you can see, it uses this frequency range. If I select this link, Overview, and I search for this frequency plan, I can clearly see which frequency I can use. This is for uplink messages, and this is for downlink messages. For now, ignore these values. I will explain this in later videos. Let's go back. For example, if you live in the United States, here you can see it uses this frequency range. Let's go back to overview. These are the frequencies used in the United States. Here are the frequencies for the uplink messages, and here are the frequencies for the downlink messages. As mentioned earlier, in the United States, LoRaWAN operates in the 902 to 928 MHz frequency band. Let's look at the United States frequency allocation. Here is the United States frequency allocations. It starts from 3 kHz to 900 gigahertz. Let's zoom in. It starts from 3 kilohertz to 300 gigahertz. As you can see, this radio spectrum is allocated for many different uses. For example, this frequency range is allocated for radio navigation, and this frequency range is allocated for TV broadcasting. Let's see where the 902 to 928 MHz ISM band is located. Let's zoom in. 902 to 928. And it is clearly marked over here. 915 MHz plus minus 13 MHz. This is the frequency range used by LoRa within the United States. In the European Union, LoRa uses the 863 to 870 MHz frequency range. That is this range. As you can see, in the United States, this frequency range is allocated for land mobile radio systems. For example, two-way radios in vehicles. If you buy a LoRa development board, always buy one with the correct frequency, which applies to your country. If you buy the wrong frequency, you break the law and it will not work. The same applies to the gateway. I live in the Netherlands, so I have to buy a gateway using this frequency. If you build your own LoRa node, you can buy these radio modules. This is such a radio module. And as you can see, I have bought one with 868 MHz. Never buy the wrong frequency. Devices such as microwave ovens, medical equipment, or baby monitors all uses the ISM band. Here are ISM band advantages. Anyone is allowed to use these frequencies and no license fee is required. And here are ISM band disadvantages, low data rate and lots of interference because anyone can use these frequencies. Because the ISM band can be used by everyone, there must be some rule set, otherwise this band will become unusable. Think of the many signal interferences. There are several international organizations which manage the radio spectrum to ensure safe coexistence between all the different radio technologies. In Europe, the European Telecommunication Standard Institute, ETSI, creates standards which are used by local regulatory authorities, meaning countries. More information about ETSI can be found at this location. In the United States, the Federal Communications Commission, aka FCC, creates these standards. 
More information about FCC can be found at this location. All other countries are using the standard set by either ETSI or FCC. Except Japan, they have the Telecom Engineering Center, and South Korea, they have the Korean Communications Commission. For example, in the Netherlands, its telecommunication regulatory authority is called the Telecom Agency, in Dutch, Agentschap Telecom, which is part of the Ministry of Economic Affairs and Climate, in Dutch, Ministerie van Economische Zaken en Klimaat. This regulatory authority has issued the conditions and requirements when using LoRa in the Netherlands and is based on the standards set by Etsy. More information about the Dutch LoRa conditions and requirements can be found at these two locations. Let's only focus on Etsy and FCC. Here are two geographic areas, in this example Netherlands and China, where the Etsy regulatory domain is used. And here are two geographic areas, in this case United States and Australia, where the FCC regulatory domain is used. If I focus on the Netherlands, this national regulatory authority uses the standard set by Etsy, but they can also add additional rules. Here you see the network operator. There are commercial or non-commercial operators who can set up a LoRaWAN network. These operators can set additional rules. For example, in Europe, when using the ISM band frequencies, 863 MHz to 870 MHz, users must comply to the following rules. For uplink, the maximum transmission power is limited to 25 MW or 14 dBm. For downlink, for 869.525 MHz, the maximum transmission power is limited to a half watt or 27 dBm. There is a 0.1% and 1% duty cycle per day depending on the channel. And the maximum allowed antenna gain is 2.15 dBi. Besides these ISM band rules, the network operator, for example the Things Network, can also add additional restrictions. If you use the Things Network, which is a free public community LoRaWAN network, the following fair use policy applies. The uplink airtime is limited to 30 seconds per day per node and the downlink messages are limited to 10 messages per day per node. More information about the Things Network fair use policy go to this location. When a signal is sent from a sender, it takes a certain amount of time before a receiver receives this signal. This time is called time on air. Here is the sender and here is the receiver. Here is a sender with a transmission radio and here is the antenna. And here's the receiver with the receiver radio with an antenna. In this example, it takes 530 milliseconds to travel from this antenna to this antenna. So the 530 milliseconds is the time on air. Duty cycle is the proportion of time during which a component, device or system is operated. The duty cycle can be expressed as a ratio or as a percentage. As mentioned previously, in Europe there is a 0.1% and 1% duty cycle per day, depending on the channel. For example, time on air is 530 milliseconds and the duty cycle is 1%. So the 530 milliseconds is the time on air, which equals 1%. So 99% of the time, which is the same as 52.47 seconds, and this is the amount of time you have to wait after you have sent a signal. So after you have waited 52.47 seconds, you can broadcast the same signal again, meaning the same size signal. Here's another example. Time on air is 400 milliseconds, and now the duty cycle is 0.1%. So 400 milliseconds represents 0.1%. So 999 times this time on air, equals 399.6 seconds. So after you have sent this signal, you have to wait 399.6 seconds before you can send the same signal again. So why is this duty cycle rule set? If there were no duty cycle, then anyone can broadcast at unlimited time, which renders the usage of the ISM band completely unusable. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. 
please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe. If you have questions, leave your comments below. I'll do my best to answer them.